Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow Fury 33 bringing you a casted match of a replay between Memento and Perlox. This is a game that was played a while ago, actually. It's been an older replay, but I promised I'd get around to it, and now I am. So, this is going to be between Grekum and Grekum. It's a Grekum versus Grekum match, which we saw quite a bit of in the Temporal Anomalies tournament near the finals and which we'll be seeing here now as well. And Memento and Perlox are both fairly new players. They're not completely inexperienced, but they are still somewhat new. So it'll be interesting to see how they play out, and Perlox did want me to cast this to get an idea of how he was playing and what he could do to improve, and I'm sure Memento would appreciate that too. So this will be a bit more of a how-to-play Akron rather than a pure competitive commentary. Anyway, both players are starting out and getting their early Faros. Memento has started to set up his Octos. He is the one we're focusing on right now. If we focus on Perlox, see that he has gotten his economy build up as well. So both players are getting their Octos up about... Actually, Perlox is a bit earlier than Memento. Memento is not going back to change it at this point. So Perlox will have a slight economic advantage out of the gate, but this map is fairly large. This is Twilight of the Elders. It is a fairly large map. It has an expansion near the top left corner and two expansions on the bottom right, near the main bases. So these expansions kind of split evenly, but the top expansion can be quite a point of contention. So we'll see how that goes, if that actually ends up becoming a point of contention. And in case you're wondering, the ship, the area itself is actually meant to look like a crashed Grekum capital ship. As you can see all these tentacles going off, which is basically what a Grekum capital ship is, is a giant metallic octopus in the sky. Yeah, it's pretty scary, all right. Actually, more like giant metallic squid in the sky. Regardless, that's that's just the basis for the art of the map. The actual structure of the map is fairly simplistic, but could make for some interesting matches depending on how the players decide to use the expansions in your butt. What? Okay, that was odd. Anyway, apparently Memento had disconnected during this point in the game, or... Anyway, I apologize for that. I don't know why it said that the game engine had stopped. The This should be running just fine. The Arcticus for Memento is going towards the nor the expansion near the south, the nearer expansion, while Perlox was sending his Arcticus over to the middle expansion, to the sort of between expansion, the northwest expansion. And currently he is building up more of his economy, getting LC saturation and QP starting to build up, while Memento is going more for... QP than LC. <clears throat> I'm guessing he's probably going to go for early tech, probably try to get earlier air. Maybe go for a Chrono Rush, but I kind of doubt it. He is, however, fast forwarding, which is something you have to do in order to Chrono Rush, but it's also something that's just commonly done, so there's no indication because of that he is planning to Chrono Rush. Grekum Chrono Rush is also incredibly unpopular these days, so I highly doubt he's going to do it. He is, however, sending a quick Octopod towards Perlox, which will allow him to scout out and quickly deal a bit of damage. Though, of course, this is quite a ways into the future, so Perlox has plenty of time to react to this. He has, well, pretty much the entire timeline at this point. So the Yacht Body's coming in. It will be attacking the Faro first, and Perlox, now aware of it, is building his own off spot, actually, so we will be able to defend it once that comes up. He's building a reef over in the corner, interestingly. He's getting advanced structures, but he's clearly quite paranoid about it being damaged. Now, normally what Dragon players will do is they'll put their Reef near their Triad, and also put their Arcticus near the tank, but he's using the Arcticus to scout, which is perfectly valid. The Reef is often used for healing, basically. A couple Reefs will keep your base quite well healed, and Perlock's just double-checking the attack. He sees that there is one Octopod, nothing huge to worry about. Memento has the attack continuing along. He is... Let's see, he has built advanced structures, he will be going for a Spire from the looks, but he had a Faro before he jumped through time. And he has his Arcticus, which won't be able to land at that particular ramp, because that's actually a ramp. But the Arcticus can land nearby, and Perlox's Arcticus, at about the 4 minute mark, is nearly at its destination. And of course the Octopod, this is when it came in. Perlox jumping back a bit further, double checking his upgrades, and getting another Octopod as well. He has a resource advantage at this point. He has 6 QP and 8 LC versus 6 LC and 5 QP. Though Memento is going for a more easily defended expansion, Perlox isn't... I mean, neither player is expanding at this point, so it, it doesn't really matter. Memento is pulling away his Octopod to attack 
Looks like he's planning to attack the RPs from behind rather than going for a frontal assault, which is the best idea at this point. Though, really, this Octopod Harassment isn't going to be able to do too much. Looks like... No, he's not even planning that. He's actually just keeping an Octopod here just to keep it here. Because... Oh, no, he's going for Harassment. I was about to say, looks like he might be going for a Lego tri... Like a Seppi Lego with a pod triad, the Pharopod. Putting it in here to sneak in a Seppi Lego from inside of Prolox's base. And that'd be really cool to see. But no, he actually went for a straight raid. So Prolox does know the Octopod is still inside his base. And attacking one of his QP RPs. Not a huge deal at this point. It puts... Nah, it still puts Perlox ahead in resources. So Perlox really, he just has to spend his resources as best he can. And he's close enough to the present that he should be able to do that no problem. He has a couple Octopods that are going to be... Well, look, he's sending them to attack. He just jumped back to make sure his macro was perfect earlier on in the past. And he will have pretty good defenses. He... Huh, okay, so Memento has undone this attack entirely, not even going for it. The Octopod... Or sorry, no, he hasn't undone the attack. He appears to have slowed down the attack, though. It did happen much earlier, and now he is definitely pulling it back. He is making sure that Perlox is having to work and burn out his Chrono Energy, just trying to defend against the Octopods. But Perlox, of course, knowing where the Octopod will be in advance from you know, seeing it as it attacks, will be able to respond eventually. The idea, of course, being to pull Perlox back to the unplayable past and force him to basically defend by burning his Chrono Energy. At this point, however, Perlox is ahead of Memento, meaning that Memento will actually have a really hard time forcing Perlox to burn away his Chrono Energy without burning away his own in the process. Memento is about to come ahead of Perlox, though, and that won't really make a difference. The Octopod is moving towards the back. It is trying to stop the expansion rather than harass the main base, so Perlox can now develop his main base a bit less hindered, though Memento Let's see, at this point, it's the 421 mark. Memento does not have air units yet, so Perlox definitely had an advantage during this game so far. He has to spire up at the 430 mark, and Memento didn't get it up until a fair bit later. And Memento trying to go for harassment, not really able to do as much. Memento is getting some. Or, focus on Memento for a second. Memento is getting some Sep EC and a Faro. He is anticipating a Faro pod, I'm sure. Which is a good anticipation, because that's exactly what's coming. And here we are. This is where it's near the unplayable past, and Memento is. Well, it's hard to say if he was successful because it looks like Perlox was focused more on his macro, more on his expansions than he was on actually defending the Octopod. So I'd say that Memento probably didn't really do much with the harassment. He is where we're going towards the Contentious expansion. He is not going near him to find the Arcticus, but he will be able to at least stop Perlox from going there. That is his planned expansion route. And here comes the Farapods, so now Memento does have Aryans coming up. Perlox has had Farapods for a little while, but he's using for defense. He's not using to harass with yet. No, not at his time either. He, at 5.30 mark, is at the expansion. He's using it to defend the expansion. And Octopod's coming in towards what will likely be Memento's natural expansion. So Perlox has expanded QP towards his safer expansion in the east. He is not going towards the northwest expansion. He simply has the Arcticus there. And the Octopod does not know it's there. So Memento doesn't know about the Arcticus. Both players are completely unaware of the other's presence. The Octopod is... Well, see, the Octopod's from the front from Perlox are harassing the Arcticus from Memento, and now Farapods are coming to defend against it, we'll be able to destroy the Octopods. One of the Octopods moving away to attack the Octopods coming in, the other Octopods not doing much. The cloaked Farapods are confusing them a fair bit, but it doesn't matter, the, the Octopods have been destroyed, the Octos will be able, from Memento will be able to build RPs, and he will be able to claim this expansion for himself. So both players have gotten their expansions, but Perlox has not expanded as much as Memento has, and Perlox has decided to move his Farapod in to attack the main base, but he has lost his Farapod. The Seppies were a really good choice from Memento. Very nice planning there. He knew it was going to happen, and he was able to defend against it. So Perlox is going to have to undo that attack, but I don't think he actually has the meta time for that. I think he has... Yeah, because the attack occurred right here, so he probably doesn't have a chance to undo it. He will need to build some more far pods, but he actually does have an advantage at this point. He also has two triads. Really nice idea. He has two, pod or two base class triads, which will mean that the energy requirement won't be as big of a bottleneck for him. Normally, energy is a bit of a big deal because units for Grekum need energy from the progenitors as well as needing resources that you gather from RPs, which means if you have only one progen triad, it can only produce about six units or so, six or seven units before it has to wait, of a particular type, that is. But each member of the triad can only help produce six units. So it does limit your ability to produce units. And that's the Farapod defense we saw before at seven minute mark. So Perlox 
sees that his attacks are completely useless. He is getting Seppi Pods, which is a great idea. I should have mentioned that earlier. He is getting Seppi Pods. He isn't focused too much on the present. He is he's definitely allowed himself to be pulled towards the unplayable past, which Memento has a bit of an advantage in. He has a current unit advantage at the 742 mark near the unplayable past. So he's definitely got an advantage further in the past. Perlox shouldn't try to stay there too much. He does have Seppi Pods to defend, however. And the Seppi Pods are going to be able to defend. They are attacking the Far Pods. The Far Pods and the 812 mark are being defended against completely well. There's no problems here. Perlox is well prepared to defend against anything right now that Memento can throw at him. And Memento, unfortunately, not having... Actually, he has some energy. He can actually abort this attack if he wanted to, but it's going to be very tricky to do so. Look, it's very tight timing, but he could just barely. However, he is focused on the macro. He has abandoned that attack. Not going to bother trying to completely undo it. More Seppi Pods coming in from Perlox, and that will be able to just defend against anything else that comes in from the Far Pods. And now the Seppi Pods are being used to harass against the expansion. Perlox trying to regain this resource advantage, which he had before, using it to make Seppi Pods, and now making three Far Pods, which is a great idea as well. And he has Chronoporting, by the way. He's had Chronoporting this whole time, so he can actually start Chronoporting back these units and use that to reestablish some dominance earlier in the timeline. Because he definitely had resource dominance, and now he's able to get some unit dominance as well. Memento has resources, he doesn't have units. He has enough current energy to start macroing where he is when he is now. But he isn't actually focusing on that, he's focused more on getting Seppi's... Tons of Seppi's towards the Seppi Pods. Good idea, but he might need a couple more. I think nine will be enough. However, they are coming in single file, which means Seppi's Pods will be able to make short work of them. And the remaining seven, or sorry, six are going to be able to finish up the Seppi Pods, but Perlox has plenty of meta time to deal with this. He probably won't bother. Oh, he does have a Chronoport, by the way. He has Chronoport back his units, and he looks to be Chronoporting back another set of units, most likely these Far Pods. Yep, the Far Pods going back towards the past, likely for an uppercut, which we will see fairly soon once the green time comes along. Perlox nicely not allowing his uppercuts to be seen, which is standard practice. So, Memento is aware that the Chronoport Departure has happened. Just now he passed by it. The alert would have occurred. So he's aware of a Chronoport Departure having happened. His, heavy his heavies were in the main base, however, during that time around here. So he should be able to defend against it. But he does have a lot of wasted resources. And unless he... He's getting Gate Take of his own. Or Chronoport, I should say, of his own. So he will be able to defend against this. He is definitely fully aware that a Chronoport has occurred. And now Seppi Pod's coming into his main base. The Seppi's will be able to make sure it worked on them, but not without taking some losses themselves. Two Seppi's down, two, three Seppi Pods down, and Seppi Pods are going to be finished off before being able to deal too much more damage. And Seppi Pod Wing coming in from Memento to finish everything off, but by that point, Perlox's Seppi Pods were already dead. And here's the unplayable blast attack. It is... Oh, it's coming in. No player is actually observing at the moment. But that is that glowing red. You, as I mentioned before, if you see glowing red, you have to defend against it. There's there's no question. You must defend against glowing red. You must figure, especially with chronoporting. If you don't count up chronoporting, then you just have to know what's going on. But Memento has chronoporting. He can defend against this red, and he needs to know what's going on now. But surprised he hasn't jumped back to check it out. And Perlox has decided to expand a bit more here. Nothing going on here yet, but he is definitely expanding towards this base. He's getting more LCRPs at the east base. The northwest base, neither player is really expanded into. And Perlox, at the 1150 mark, he has a he has a pod class tried, he has legal class, he is from here he can be able to build some Octa Legos if he wants to. And he can probably he's probably gonna build Seppi Legos, but at this point in the metagame, Seppi Legos weren't as big of a deal. And here's the far pods we saw before, they were chrono pointing back, the uppercut that occurred, and like I said, this, there were Seppies. There were Seppies here to defend against it, which means that it won't really be a big deal. Now, this is what Perlox thought had happened, which is the far pods coming in and actually obliterating everything, but because there were Seppies in the way, Memento managed to defend against that very nicely by using Seppies. However, this does mean Memento does have a point in meta time where this red time of his past, this blue time of has not caught up to, where he does not actually have anything except these three, these five Seppi pods that were, well, that was all he had. So the blue time of does keep his main base alive, and his Seppi is the Seppi Seppi pod battle we saw before, where the Seppi is just one single handedly. And Memento, not a huge worry, but Perlox did lose his uppercut to that. Which is, like I said, very clever defense. Memento is doing a great job of predicting when to defend. Just building Seppi's when he needs to for the time that he'd actually be attacked to in the past. Not sure if he's intending to do this or if it's just that the way he's building enough Seppi's to do it. But it's a great thing that he is building that many Seppi's. They are wonderful anti-air defenders if they can get into range. Now, for most air units, this isn't a big deal. Seppi Legos have higher range, though 
I'm pretty sure the next patch will be dropping them down a bit. And the let's see the base for Perlox, his LCRPs have been set up, and Memento is having to rebuild his blue time of his come along, so his base has been restored into the playable past. He does have defenses up. He won't have to worry too much about stuff, but he does have... He is starting to lose his horses. He has not as many LC crates as he used to. He has only six running LCRPs. He has none of the RPs in this base here. They were destroyed earlier by Seppi Pods. He is rebuilding them right now while his Seppis come back to help defend. So Perlox, once again, has resource advantage, and he also has a tech advantage. He is focused mostly on getting legal class, especially Octoleo, and I'm curious where he's going with this. If he's going to go for a direct assault, followed by Chronoport to get the Octoleos back further in the past, or if he's planning on going instead for just using Octoleos as defense and pushing in with Sepi Legos. I don't think he's going for Sepi Legos, though. It doesn't seem likely given his current build pass. He doesn't have a lot of resources coming in, though. His LC, are, his LC crates have been removed, and here we have Memento is sending back well, he's Chronoport back some Seppi Legos. Sorry, Seppi Pods. Not Legos. Chronoport back some Seppi Pods to help just Chrono Clone as an assault and defense force. No, purely an assault force. The Seppi Pods are going to the attack, going to harass these RPs, try to get rid of them so that Prolox doesn't have as much in the way of resources. But unfortunately for him, he did send it right as the Chronoport departure happened, so the Seppi Pod Chrono Clone only dealt a little bit of extra damage, not much. Which is kind of unfortunate for Memento, but it does mean that he is... Well... It does mean he's still going to harass, but he has aborted the harassment entirely. He's going straight for, looks like, the north north side of the map. He's not even going for northwest base. He does see the Octo, the Octo here, though. He does see the Octo that is going towards the northwest. And Perlox will be losing that quite shortly. No, it won't. Memento not going for it. Not finishing off, so... Choosing instead... Well, just to stand around here, make sure no more Octos get past. The Octopod finishing off the Octo, so Perlox is going to have a hard time expanding to the Northwest Expansion. However, he still has a resource advantage, he doesn't have to worry about it. He should be going closer to the present to Macro though, which is kind of annoying that he isn't. Memento on the other hand has a small resource pool, but still on the back foot when it comes to resources. Getting an expansion, or starting to get an expansion towards the South Base where he has some safety, and like I said, getting more defense forces. Using his heavy pods to attack however, instead of using them to block off Octos. Now, of course, this first Octo here should be killed by the Octopod once it comes into range. And the Seppi Pods coming in cloned in. They are attacking the Arcticus, the main Arcticus for Perlox, but he's not using it for any command structure. So Perlox is not actually losing anything for this. Memento, however, is continuing from here into a raid on the main base. However, most of these RPs, while useful as RPs, are completely used up. And one, only one of the Octos managed to get through. Not both of them. The Octopod got rid of one of the Octos that came in. And these RPs are being destroyed quite heavily as well. But... Looks like Perlox, oh boy, Perlox is getting heavily attacked by an uppercut. He has not managed to get that to work for him in his favor. So his Octopods, or the Octoligas are coming in to help defend, and will be able to help defend fairly soon. Actually, it looks like he, no, it looks like he tried to Chronoport, but didn't. It's because it, well, this appeared to be a Chronoport arrival. And... Yeah, it would appear that he made a Chronoport arrival, Chronoport departure, which got aborted for him. While Perlox, of course, made a sorry, Memento, of course, made a couple of short range Chronoports we saw earlier, and making even more to harass the expansion. He's destroyed the expansion to the east. He is attacking. No, he's getting attacked in the expansion over here, and that must be where the Chronicle occurred, because there's no way the Zoctolegus got there fast enough. So that is. Nice little Chronoport there, but I think it's a Chronoport anyway. Dr. Legos may have simply walked the whole way. I mean, that is possible. Perlox could have sent them along, but I think that was a Chronoport involved. Curious is no departure, though, unless this was an earlier departure, but it doesn't appear to be the case. I kind of wish one of the players would go back there to check it out, but none of them are. Once, oops. Once again, the flashing red. Very important to check, and Memento is not checking that, and as a result, he's going to be losing his main base very shortly, not realizing what's going on. Though his main base isn't particularly useful at this point anyway. He does have a small duo. He's focused heavily, though, on Seppi Pods and Seppis. Very useful for harassment, and he's using them to raid effectively, except for the fact that these RPs aren't really that useful. These crates are almost done. There's only about 60 QP within all of them. The main base has been used up, and now Seppis in the main base are defending quite well against Seppi Pods that are trying to attack the Triads. 
and here are the remaining RPs for Memento. Perlox is setting up, well, he set up quite effective offense, and Memento has GG'd, so well done, and here come the oct some oct more Octoligos. So Memento has GG'd, Perlox has won, well done Perlox, he pulled together very well there and made use of the resource advantage he had early on, so I'm impressed. Well done. By the way, on a totally different note, the there was a patch scheduled that I mentioned in an earlier cast for Tuesday, February 28th. Because of the aforementioned Sepi Go balance changes and some, well, any balance change that is done has to be run through a balancing algorithm that Hazardous has, which I think the implementation time took a bit too long, and so the release is delayed until next Monday. So I apologize for that because I actually did convince the game designer to shorten the Sepi Go range when he asked me about any last minute game design, or game balance issues, I should say, and that has delayed the patch. So I apologize for that. However, I put some links into the description that will have some of the content that will be in the next patch, because some of it was just art stuff that I was doing that you may have seen in some of the other casts, just improving the textures on the units and so forth. And there's some IRC in the menu interface improvements as well. Those have been also put online. So you can download those and throw them into your existing copy of Akron. It's not the complete patch because there's obviously other things that are going to be changed, like Sepi the Go range being dropped by two, which is a huge change because it means that tourists can actually stop them. But in the meantime, it will at least be something from the next patch. So anyway, apart from that, I hope you enjoyed this and have a good night, everyone.